Welcome back. Before we went for the break, we heard from both the Director General for Research and Development at ILRI, Mr. Dieter, and the PS Crop Development and Agricultural Research, Mr. Boga, on the importance of vaccines and genetics research for the growth of livestock sector in the country. Unfortunately, pastoral livestock keepers rely almost exclusively on the limited and often delayed public sector vaccination services. Consequently, there is widespread self-diagnosis and medication, abundance of counterfeit and substandard drugs and frequent outbreaks of livestock diseases. Ilona Glucks explains further on some of the challenges that have developed especially in relation to the deadly malignant cattle fever. So this disease, of course, only occurs where we have wilder bees. So this is in Kenya, in southern Kenya, in Tanzania, where we have wilder bees. We have Zambia, Zimbabwe, we South, Af South Africa, where we have the wilder bees. But if you add the cattle population together, and from a private sector perspective, it's maybe one million, two million doses a year that you will have to produce, which would make the vaccine very expensive. So. We are, that, that is the challenge really, you know, how can you bridge this gap so that the private sector is interested also to address this more neglected diseases where you cannot produce one billion doses in a year and make a big profit out of it, but where you only have a limited amount of demand and that, that is a big challenge. So we are, ILRI has a program together with our partner GulfMed. Um, and another partner which is called Kling Global in South Africa. So we are trying to look into issues like that. So to bring the private sector on board and explain to them that even these neglected diseases are very important to be addressed. How then can pastoralist herders prevent their cattle from MCF? Ilona advises. The traditional way for pastoralists to avoid the disease is to migrate away and then wait for two, three months until the calving season is over and then they come back, which used to work very well. Um, but now because of privatization of land in the southern rangelands and so it's not so easy anymore to migrate anywhere, anywhere where you wanted to. So it becomes more challenging because now you're suddenly stuck with the animals um, in the same area. So a vaccine is really, it would be very helpful. The other serious diseases that the research organization has put a lot of emphasis on are the Rift Valley Fever. The disease primarily affects sheep, goats, cattle and camels, but can also be transmitted to people via contact or consumption of contaminated meat or via mosquito bites. The foot and mouth disease is highly contagious and affects cloven hooved animals. The disease creates enormous economic burden in regions where it is endemic. Control is achieved by multiple vaccinations and by limiting the animal's movements, but the vaccines are prohibitively expensive for many livestock keepers in low and middle income countries. So the biggest challenge I think all the whole um, beef industry is struggling with is foot and mouth disease. Yeah, so we have a vaccine available. It only um, is effective for four months, so you have to actually vaccinate three times a year, which is a lot. Um, Production-wise, it's also not always available because people now more and more realize that vaccination is a good thing, so the demand has increased, but the production has not yet fully increased. Yeah. Um, so it's this thing, demand and, and availability um, of a vaccine. So FMD is a huge challenge, so it doesn't kill the animals, but you have what they call a productive loss. You know, the animals, they look awful, they can't eat for some time, they lose weight. So if you want to produce beef, so you want them to gain every day some, some meat, right? So FMD is a big challenge. Um, we don't have it here so much, but East Coast fever is a big challenge also in the beef, uh, in the beef industry. So for that, there is um, a vaccine available. People have heard about it. It's called the Muguga cocktail, where you basically infect the animal with the parasite and then immediately treat it. So then you trigger a lifelong immunity for this animal and then you don't have the problem with East Coast fever, which is transmitted by ticks. Um, what else do we have? We have Rift Valley fever, which used to be not a big issue, but with climate change, more rain in various areas, 
with belly fever is an, has a negative impact on the production as well because pregnant animals abort so you lose a one year crop as we call it so um, but there's a vaccine available for that one as well and there's also a new vaccine that is we are testing out currently which um, can also be used in human because it's a it's a zoonotic disease so the impact on humans is actually almost worse than on the livestock yeah. According to statistics from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, Kenya's livestock sector is primed to grow exponentially over the next three decades and anchor the country's food sufficiency amid a rapid rise in the human population, a new survey shows. Projections suggest that between 2015 and 2050, cattle population will increase by 94% and there will also be major productivity gains. According to Ilona, investing in beef farming is a worthwhile risk. Yes, it can be viable, but you need to manage very well. You know, you need land um, to provide pasture for your animals. If you don't have land and you just want to raise animals like in a feedlot, that is very expensive. So unless you have land where you can produce the feed for the feedlot, then it can be viable, right? Um, Labour is an issue, right? Um, so, well, if you have a smaller farm, you can let your animals go and graze outside, so that is okay. Here on the bigger farm, we, we struggle with wildlife, so we have lions as well, so every herd needs to have a herder, so we have a lot of people working here as well, which is a cost. So yes, you can, and um, if you look at the development of the meat price in the last 20 years, it's been going up every year, right? Um, so there, that is also because of the demand. And the ranch, 13,000 hectares in size, was acquired in parcels between 1981 and 1997 and is wholly owned by Elri. It is located in Machakos County at an altitude of about 1,650 to 1,900 meters above sea level. Apart from rearing animals for research, it also operates a fully-fledged commercial beef farm. Need an improved brand breeding bull to upgrade your beef herd? At Kapiti, you will definitely never go wrong. For specifically for the Buran, there's the Buran Cattle Breeders Society. Yeah, um, so we are not the only ones who have Buran. And like Kipir, there are a lot of Burans as well, and they're spreading around the country more and more, especially in the semi arid lands, right? This is, as I say, it's more for the semi arid lands, this animal. So uh, currently, a non registered breeding bull goes between 150 and 180,000 shillings. If you want a purebred registered bull with the stud book, then you have to pay something from 250,000 and above, at least, yeah. Well, you just write us an email or you contact us, um, our farm manager here as well. So you just say, we want a breeding bull, then you, we, we have some available. You come, you look at them, you see if that's what you like, and then we tell you the price you pay, and then you can take it. And every breed, has stud animals. So those um, animals follow certain conformations. Yeah. So to get an animal registered with the stud book, you have to have an inspector to come and look at this animal and it has to follow certain patterns. So the feet need to be all right, you know, the complexion of the animals need to be in a certain way. The hump is not supposed to fall forward but backwards. So they are, they're criteria where they look at that and then they tell you okay we can register this as a pure animal or we can't right um, the benefit at the end for that is simply that you can sell them for more money when they are registered here specifically at the moment we do not have any registered animals because we do it mainly commercially and for research so for the, us this extra cost in the stud book was not um, had no benefit really, right? But if you want to keep a breed pure and you need a stud book like that, yeah. And that's all we had time for on this week's beef farming show. Be sure to catch the rerun every Thursday morning from 7 a.m. Until next week, same time, keep it KTN Farmers TV.